I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Looking at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm reading a verse of scripture and I'm reading it from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 18. Here is God's word for you. And this word, as it comes to you, will do good in your life. Tonight, you will not go back home as you came. It says, come now. Now you can see, an invitation is coming to you. And the Lord is saying, that invitation is today. And that invitation is for this time. And is going to do something in your life. It says, come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. It calls you to a deliberation. It says, let's talk together. Look at your life. Look at your challenge. Look at the body and look at the sorrows you have. Come now at this time. Let's deliberate. Let's discuss. Let us reason together. Then it says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, it says, they shall be as wool. It's talking about libration there. It says, I know you are bound. I know your oppression. I know the bondage. I know the imprisonment. Let's come together. Let's reason together. Talk together. Deliberate together. Because tonight is the night of your liberation. He will set you free. Every power that holds you down, the Lord will himself deliver you tonight in Jesus' name. The bondage of sin, it will be broken. Bondage of sickness, it will be broken. Bondage of satanic attack, it will be broken. Actually, the expectation here is surprising. It is not an expected expectation because the Lord had been talking about them. It was like, yeah, the controversy was there. And as you look at Isaiah chapter 1, from the very first verses, you'll wonder, oh, is he calling them now? Because he had told them in verse 3, he said, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass is master's grief. But, he said, Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Then he says, ah, sinful nation. And he goes on to say, they were so bad. He said, they were like Sodom and Gomorrah. You were sick, he was going to judge them. You were sick, he was going to destroy them. All of a sudden, after he has said, don't even bring your oblation to me. It's a disturbance unto me. Don't bring your worship. I don't want to see you. Who has told you to step at my court. All of a sudden, the Lord turns around. The Lord is turning around for you tonight. I said the Lord is turning around for you tonight. After rebuking them, after challenging them, after saying, I don't want to see all that mess you call worship or sacrifice. Then he said, come now. I'm telling you tonight about God's unexpected invitation. God's unexpected invitation. We didn't expect this. They didn't expect this. You wouldn't expect this. You think it's coming as a judge. It's coming as a consuming fire. It's coming to take vengeance on the people. But you said, no, the day of mercy has arrived. And the day of miracle has arrived. And the day of wonders has arrived. It's arri it has arrived for you. I pray that you will not miss this opportunity. Somebody there said, you will not miss this opportunity. God's unexpected invitation to supernatural wonders. Supernatural wonders. The wonder of salvation, the supernatural the wonder of healing, that's supernatural. The wonder of deliverance, that's supernatural. The wonder of a recreation, something that is lost in your body. A recreation is taking place tonight. And the wonder of giving you miracle children. Are you there? Miracle children have arrived. 
and you will have your own tonight in Jesus' name. Because the Lord calls us and the Lord calls you in particular unexpectedly to this supernatural wonder. Let me read that chapter 1 verse 18 again in Isaiah. Come now. It says, don't waste time. While the Lord is waiting to bless you, while the Lord is waiting to prosper you, while the Lord is waiting to change your destiny, it says, now is the time. Now is the period. And now is the moment of your salvation. The moment of your healing. The moment of your wonder. And the moment of your miracle. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Do your sins be as scarlet? They shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Invitation by God. You see, by God the judge, no. He sheds off the clothing of the judge at this time. And he comes like a father, a tender father, a loving father, a merciful father. And he says, now I want to splash my love on you. Pour my love on you. I want to do what you are not expecting. He wants to perform a miracle for you beyond your prayer, beyond your expectation, beyond your desire. And tonight is that night for you in Jesus' name. It doesn't come as a judge tonight. It comes as a father. It's a creator. It's a creator. But now it comes as a redeemer. He said, I created you and something went wrong. I created you, and things are now upside down, and now he comes, not as creator, but as redeemer. He says, I want to redeem you. I want to save you. He comes as savior. He says, I have arrived, your savior. He says, I have arrived, your redeemer. He says, I have arrived, and he is your healer. And he says, are you sick? Come now. Are you oppressed? Come now. Are you tormented? Come now. Are you sorrowful? Come now. Are you suffering? Come now. And he says, when you come, it will do the unthinkable. It will do the incredible. It will do the unexpected in your life. And it calls you as your deliverer. It says, I know you are bound. I know you are tied up. I know there are challenges in your life. I come because the anointing that breaks the yoke is here tonight. It will broke, break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. It comes as the merciful God. As the merciful God that says, I have the power, I have the might, and I want to deliver you. And he says, but I can't do anything until you come. That's why you are coming to Christ. I say that's why you are coming to Christ. Because the moment you come, something great will happen to you there. Something wonderful and forgettable will happen to you there. This is a day you will never forget in your life. A day when the power of God from high came upon your life and touched you and rolled those problems away. Once again, I'm talking to you on God's unexpected invitation to supernatural wonders. There are three things we're going to talk about before we pray. Tonight is a night of prayer. Miracle prayer. Wonder walking prayer, mountain moving prayer, and problem solving prayer, and it's coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the unclean condition of the sinner. You see, as you look at Isaiah, Isaiah painted the picture. He said, There's no deception here. He says, There's no misunderstanding here. God is calling you, not because He didn't know what you were. Not because he didn't know what you have been. Not because he didn't know where you have gone. Not because he doesn't know the uncleanness. He knows everything about you. And in spite of the knowledge he has about you, he's still saying, come, and you can come now. Don't say, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'll go to River Jordan and wash and come back. He says, not necessary. I'll go to River Jerusalem and wash and come back. It's not necessary. As you are. Come just as you are. I know you're unclean. I know you are sinful. I know you are defiled. I know you are dirty. All the same, come now and let us deliberate. Let us discuss. Let's show the path and the way to justification. Let's show the way to your liberation. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Then he says, do your sins be as scarlet. 
they'll be washed as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, it says they'll be whiter than wool. And then point number two, the uncommon conversion by the Savior. The uncommon. The unique conversion. Something that never happened before. And tonight it's happening to you. In your life eternal life. A new life, abundant life. A new life, a happy life. A new life, a joyful life. A new life, a heavenly life is coming to you today. It says, I'll cleanse you. I'll wash you. I'll purge you. I'll make you as white as snow. The uncommon conversion by the Savior. But it doesn't stop there. It says, it's going to be number three, the undeniable cure of the sick. The undeniable cure of of the sick. It says, all is hinged on you coming. It says, if you will come now, it's a period of mercy for you. If you will come now, it's a day of cleansing for everyone. If you will come now, it's the day of the joy. The joy of receiving a great miracle from the Lord. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Let your sins be as carnage. They'll be as white as snow. And though they'll be red like crimson, they will be as wool. One by one. One step at a time. Number one, the unclean condition of the sinner. The unclean condition of the sinner. You will know that God has the right knowledge and the normal knowledge and the full knowledge about the people he's calling. When he calls you, it's not that he doesn't know who you are. He knows who you are. He knows what you've done, and he knows how dirty you are. Look at this. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. He says, I know this. Your sins are as college. Your sins are as college. And then he says, I know this. Your sins are as red like crimson. Actually, the picture that is being painted here is a picture of dying clothes. That is, you put the dye, and it was red. It was red in color. And what they did in those days, they put uh, that cloth and uh, that cloth into and uh, the into the dye that is red, and then they bring it out. After bringing, they double dye it, and they put it in again, and nobody can wash that thing and make it white anymore. And God says, I know that's how your life is. Number one, you were born in sin, and that is a kind of uh, dying into the red color, into the dirty color of the dye. That is, you are born in sin. Your nature is a nature of sin. And then he tells us, you are also a sinner by practice. You come into that dye, that one is even enough to put a stain on your life. The original sin. That is the inbred sin. That's the natural sin. That's the very nature of sin. You were dyed red as you came like this from your mother. You were a sinner. You were a liar. You were a hypocrite. And you were a deceiver. And you were a fighter. And all those evil things were there. And then by practice now, you went into that again. That the stain is so much and nobody can, can heal you. And nobody can cleanse you. And nobody can change you. And nobody can convert you. And all the same is this, but come now. I created you. I know how to remove that stain. The stain of your life will be removed tonight in Jesus' name. It says, I know what it is. In fact, Isaiah described it because he wanted us to see how dark the picture is so that when you come into the hands of God and you come out white and we compare the past from the present, we'll see how black turns to white, how red turns to white. How stain turns to something that is stainless. Because tonight, your life will be stainless. And he'll take that sin away. He'll take that guilt away. He'll take that condemnation away. Look at Isaiah telling us about them. I'm reading from verse 4. Verse 4. Isaiah chapter 1. A ah, sinful nation. A people leading it with iniquity. A seed of evil doers. Children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Can you see the description of their lives? It said they were not moving forward, they were going backward. It said they were dirty. 
not only dirty, they were defiled. Not only defiled, they were defiling other people. And he said, they were corrupt, they were corruptors. All the same, he said, I know how deep you have gone. I know how rich the die is, and I know how terrible you are, how terribly dirty you are. All the same, come now. You see, there are many people, they say, I cannot come to Christ now because I'm dirty. It's while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While you're doing those evil things, while you have done all those evil things, and while you have gone astray, while you have been a corrupter, and while you have been a defiler, and while you have been a thief, while you have been a drunkard, all those, all the same, it says, come. You can come now. Don't think that I'm too dirty to come. That's the time you're to come. I'm too guilty to come. That's the time you're to come. I am too uh, unacceptable to come. That's the time you're to come. It says, as dirty as you are. As defiled as you are, as evil as you are, as wicked as you are. It says, mercy is waiting for you. That's why salvation is not by marriage. Salvation is by the mercy of God. And it says, you can come now. Somebody there tonight, you are coming. I said, somebody there tonight, you are coming. And as you come, it says, I'll make you as white as snow. As you come, it says, I will turn your life around. I will change your life. And every dirty thing, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. I told you that Isaiah, you know, knew the people. Because God told him about the people. You will think, or think, come now. Because you are good, come now. Uh -uh. Because you are righteous, come now. No, not at all. Because you have been so you are simple-hearted people, come now. Not because of that. They were dirty. They were defiled, they were corrupt, and they were evil. And all the same, it says, I love you. That's unnatural. That's uncommon. You, can, you don't normally love people who have done evil, and they continue in the evil. But God says, I am different. I love you so much, and I want to cleanse you. I love you so much, I want to transform your life. I love you so much, I want good to come out of your life. That dirty life tonight will become clean. That sinful life tonight will become saved. And that person that has gone astray tonight, something good will come to you and your life will become beautiful once again in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy. That ye cannot hear, but your iniquities are separated between you and your God. And many things happen in your life, and you say, But why? I'm suffering, but why? I have prayed, no answer, but why? I have fasted, but why? I've done this, I've done that, but why? I've gone to school, I've come back, and still I'm in this condition, but why? It says, The hands of the Lord are not shortened, His ears are not heavy. That you couldn't have heard you, helped you, delivered you, set you free. It says, but your sin has separated you between you and God. But it says all the same. Even though the time of separation has been there, you can come now. You can come now. And as you come, mercy is waiting for you today. Salvation is waiting for you today. Look at what they have been. The unclean condition of these people. Look at verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. That he, he will not hear. He says, for your hands are defiled with blood. See them. See them. Religious people. The people that went to the places of worship. But all the same God said, your hands have been defiled with blood. Your fingers with iniquity. Your leaves have spoken lies and your tongue has muttered perverseness. is saying all the parts of your body. I gave you so that you'll do good in life. I gave you eyes to see. So that you can see the future. And see the road. And see where you are going. But you have been looking at pornography. You have been looking at things that will defy you. I gave you ears to hear. Ears to hear things that are good. That will spoil you on. That will uh, inspire you. That you'll hear things that will drive you on to the goal of the creation. 
but you're using your ears for other things and you're carrying a bloodshed and evil. I give you fingers, I give you hands so that you'll be able to construct and build and do something wonderful, but you're using the hands with evil for evil and you're murdering. And then it says, Your feet have run even to shed blood. Look at that verse 4. It says, None call it for justice. And it says, none pleaded, and none, no end, not any, pleading for truth. And they trust in vanity, and they speak lies, and they conceive mischief, and bring forth iniquity. It says, all their lives, they're only imagining evil, and they're planning evil, and they're projecting evil, and they're dreaming about evil. And when they wake up, they say, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And instead of doing good, they're doing evil. It says, I know all that about you. The unclean condition of the people. And all the same, it says, with all I know, I've decided that today will be a day of change in your life. I've decided that today will be a day of transformation in your life. That's why it says, with all that knowledge about you, that you have used every part of your body. Think about any part of your body, your brain, your mind, your heart, your knowledge, your intelligence, your mouth, your nose, your ears, your eyes, your hands, your feet. You've used everything to do evil and to defile others and to make the world more corrupt than you met the world. You say, but all the same, today is a day of your mercy. Somebody there will say, Amen. Amen. Uh, look at verse 5. It says, They hatch, cockatrice eggs, and weave the spider's web, and he that eateth of their eggs dies. It says, they are poison in what they do. And the activities of their hands will poison the lives of people. Then he goes on to say, and that which is crushed breaketh into a viper. It says, and he goes on in verse 7, it says, their feet run to evil. Their feet run to evil. Anywhere they hear, there's fighting. Anywhere they hear that they are breaking bottles and they are knocking each other. Anywhere they hear that they are making use of the cutlass and they are destroying the lives of people, they run there. And God says, I know that's who you are. I know that's what you have done. All the same. Come now. Let's change this life. Let's change this personality. Let's change this evil that you have been doing. And that change is coming tonight. I said that change is coming tonight. If you will hear the voice of the Lord, and then you say, yes, Lord, I know that's me. Yes, Lord, I know that's my life. Are you inviting me for mercy tonight? Are you inviting me for miracle tonight? Come now. Let us reason together. Let there be a deliberation between you and the Almighty God. And it says, even though you've done all this, forgiveness is available tonight. And then he's still preparing a place for you in heaven. Look at verse 7. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Have you, have, you, have you done that? Have you seen people either they shed blood with occultic powers? Or they shed blood to make rituals? Or to get money? Or whatever it is. It says, yes, I know. It doesn't mean that, you know, I said, did not know. The prophet did not know. Or God did not know. It says, yes, I know. I know all that about you. And yet, I'm calling you. And I'm saying, I want to do good in your life. I know the thoughts you have. I know the plans you have. I know the imaginations you have. I know the activities of your hand. I know how dirty, how defiled. I know how evil. All the same, I'm saying, come. And I will clean you up. And I will cleanse you. And I will touch your life. Now, if somebody rejects mercy like this, what remains for the person? If the God of heaven will say, I'm willing to forget the past. The God of heaven says, I'm willing to forget all the evil you have done. And today, today, I want to forgive you. I want to transform your life. I want to put you on the path of peace. If somebody rejects that, if somebody rejects mercy, and the judge says, I put off my regalia of judgment. I put off my regalia of royalty. Today, I put on the loving, tender clothes of a heavenly father and of a merciful father. And I want to forgive you. If somebody rejects that, angels will condemn him. If somebody rejects that, the whole world will condemn him. If somebody rejects that, even other sinners will say, if I had that opportunity, if I had the voice of the heavenly father, 
calling me like that, I would have responded. That's why you're saying you're making up your mind today. Yes, I will. I will come. I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I know I'm not worthy to be called your child, but Lord, I come and mercy is waiting for you. Somebody there has said, mercy is waiting for you. Look at what has said about them in verse 7. Their feet drawn to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. That their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting, wastage, destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they have not known. The way of peace, they don't know peace. They only know how to fight. If there's no fight, they start a fight. If there's no quarreling, they start quarreling. If everything is peaceful, they say, why is everything peaceful? And they're ready to knock anything and to destroy everything around. It says the way of peace, they know not. There is no judgment. There is no justice in their goings. It says they have made themselves crooked. They make themselves crooked paths. And whosoever goes therein shall not know peace. All the same he says, with all that, I'm still calling you. And I'm saying, come now. Is he calling you to judgment? No, not at all. Not at all. Didn't you hear what he said? He said, though your sins be as scarlet. I know your sins are as red as scarlet. I know they're deep, deeply dyed. All the same, I'll make you as white as snow. All the same, I'm going to change everything for the better in your life. Thank God. I see you there tonight. Your life is changing for the better. I see you there tonight. All your sins is going to be forgiven in Jesus' name. Isaiah tells us in chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 28. And we're reading from verse 8. And look at what it says. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that they, there is no place clean. See the people God is calling. You know, some people, religious people, they say, you know, if you're good, if you're nice, if you're not a drunkard, if you have not, if you don't smoke, if you've not done anything evil at all, if you're clean, 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 then God will love you. And then God will invite you. God says, no, I'm not inviting the people that are clean. He says, those who are whole do not need a physician. I come for the sinners. I come for the evildoers. He says, these are drunkards. He says, when they drink, they vomit. And they roll in their vomit. And they fall into the gutter. And they lie in that gutter. He said, but even though they are gutter men and gutter women, you gutter ladies, I'm still looking for them. And I'm still searching for them. And I'm calling upon the people, come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Let's reason together. Do you think that's the best you can be in life? Let's reason together. Do you think that when I created you, this is all I had for you? Let us reason together this dirty life of vomiting and rolling in that vomit. This dirty life of not having any future. Not thinking about the future. You imagine evil. You devise evil. You practice evil. You hurt other people. And there's no progress. And there's no future. Do you think that's what I created you for? Let there be deliberation. Let there be deliberation. Look at your life. And look at what you are doing. And now, let there be liberation. And tonight is the night of your liberation. In Jesus' name. He described them and he said, this is what you are doing. Okay, some of the people then said, okay, let me go out and let me go and make a change for myself. Instead of coming, instead of coming to the Lord, they say, I say, okay, you wait.